Now learning scale patterns is similar to that of using a road map. It's a means of navigation to a destination or destinations. Once you've learned the route, you now have the opportunity to take excursions and sightsee. In other words, to become more familiar with the layout of the land, names of towns, cities, how they connect and relate to one another, different routes that can be taken and still end up at your initial destination. Now most fretted instrument players, <coughs> guitar players, when learning scale patterns, see it as a means to an end of how they can get to their destination and back the quickest as if it was a road race. Now, what that does is set one up to miss the greatest experience, that of savoring the moment. As the saying goes, experiencing the depth of the moment, in this case, the depth of the note. Now, when learning music, the idea, from my perspective, is not to be in a hurry. I mean, the goal objective is not to conquer the music. After all, it's, it's not a competitive sport, even though there are many out there that treat it as such, you know, they're just confused. But music is a contemplative, personal, emotional, spiritual experience to be shared on many levels in many ways. Now, the major scale provides us with endless opportunities to be expressed through the use of a multitude of utilities and instruments, or should I say instruments. The major scale provides seven modes plus 12 keys, which equals 84 unaltered scales plus hundreds of altered variations. Now, this is an endless sea of notes and chords. Endless. Endless prospects, endless results, endless approaches to expressing oneself, constantly creating something new or something original. So, in order to get a better viewpoint of what the major scale is, let's take a closer look at the mother of all scales, C major, from which all the other scales come from, and hopefully we'll gain a little bit more insight. So let's take a look at Mama C major. So what determines the sound of a major scale? Well, it's the distance of the notes from one another. In music speak, that is known as intervals, the distance of notes from one another. What are intervals? Well, they're comprised of whole steps and half steps. As an example, we're going to be looking at C major. So let's spell out the notes that make up the scale. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So we repeated C twice. Now, if we're going up in pitch, it's going to be eight tones, that is the key tone, C, is going to be repeated eight tones above. That is known as an octave. Now, if we're going down in pitch, that would be known as blow or an octave below. That is an interval. It is a type of interval. Same thing in regards to whole steps and half steps. Those are distances from one another. So let's look at the C major scale, the mother of all scales, and see the distance of these intervals from one another through the use of the chord scale. What is the chord scale? Well, it is chords played on each one of those notes. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Okay, so C is going to be made up of three notes known as a triad. That's the reason why they call it triad, because it consists of three notes.
So we're going to have C major, we're going to have D minor, we're going to have E minor, we're going to have F major, we're going to have G major, we're going to have A minor, we're going to have a B minor flat 5, getting a little fancy there, not really, but anyhow, the next chord again is going to be C major, correct? Yes. So let's look at the distance of the intervals from one another within that scale using the chord scale. C major triad, D minor triad, E minor triad, F major triad, G major triad, A minor triad, B minor flat five, still triads, three notes, and then again the repetition of the octave. Now from here to here we have a whole step. On this instrument we have these two spaces, okay, so from this to here, it's counted two spaces, so that is a whole step, one whole step. Now to D minor to E minor, we also have a whole step, and then from E minor to F major, we don't have a whole step, we have a half step. So we used up four notes already, okay, so we used up C, D, E, and F, that's half of the scale, and we have half steps occurring within the third and fourth intervals, all the rest are whole steps, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step, okay? And the same is for the rest of the scale. We have whole steps, and then a half step there at the end between the seventh and eighth, okay? So the arrangement that makes up the sound of a major scale is that the half steps are occurring between the third and fourth and seventh and eighth of the scale of using all the tones, the complete octave. Follow? Okay, let's take it a step further to understand more about the C major scale. How does it give birth to all the other scales? Well, what you do is that you count up to the fifth chord. So let's just do that in our head. C, D, E, F, G. So the fifth chord is G major. Okay? So that is the last four notes of the scale based on our counting before, correct? Right. So what we do in order to create a new scale is we take those last four notes, which is G, A, B, and C, and we begin again and build from there to create a new scale. How do we create a new scale from the C major scale? You count up one, two, three, four, five. You use the fifth interval and you begin your new scale. So in this case, C, D, E, F, G. So it's a subdivision of the first four from the last four, correct? So you take the last four, which is G, A, B, C, and begin your new scale. G, A, B, C, so B, C is a third and fourth, it's a half step, it's good. The next four letters is D, E, F, G. The third and fourth is fine, the seventh and eighth is not, because seventh and eighth is a whole step, so we have D, E, F, G. So we have four whole steps. We need to have a half step there between the seventh and eighth. So we need to raise the F to F sharp, giving it half step between that and G, correcting it, making it a major scale. Okay, this is known as the circle of fifths. As you can see, it moves up to the fifth in order to begin a new scale. That's why it's called the circle fifths. The next scale is built from the G major scale, 
and you do the same thing, you go up to its fifth, and you begin with D. So the next scale will be D major, okay? And then the following scale, you go from that fifth, which is A major, then E major, then B major, and so on and so forth. And as you continue to build these scales, what you're doing is you're correcting the whole steps and half steps within the arrangement in order for it to match what a major scale is or what determines a major scale, which is that half step interval taking place between the third and fourth and seventh and eighth. Okay? So the circle of fifths can be used and are used as a musical exercise and an application in relationship to theory, excuse me, theory, but what's important to understand is how these scales are developed. And when you understand that really well, then you understand everything else. And there's a tendency to move on quickly and not properly process this information and digest it. Remember, it all begins and ends with the major scale. So hopefully that was helpful. Peace. We'll see you later.